Okay. So we're going to start. So first of all, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. I am Dr. Deborah Hooper, the ministry coach. And many of you know me for being on social media and giving you ministry tips. And for those of you that are looking for coaching and particularly online strategies and how to just do ministry with excellence, I am your girl. You can learn more about me if you're not familiar with me already. Learn more about me at my website at DeborahHooper.com. I am also the best-selling author of this book behind me, which is Hooper's Evangelist and Minister's Handbook, Everything You Need to Know Before You Go. And if you don't know, don't go. <laughs> okay, so I want to welcome all of you with us on tonight. I am so excited to have Bishop Har Smith, who is a medical doctor, with us on tonight. Bishop Smith is the pastor of the Apostolic Faith Church in Chicago, Illinois. He is also the former, yes, shout out to Chi-Town. <laughs> he is also the former presiding prelate of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, better known as PAW. And he is also the author of this book behind me an amazing, amazing book. And he's going to talk a little bit more about that um, later on where you can purchase it and all that, but it's called Blood Works, the insights of a pastor and hematologist into the wonder and spiritual power of blood. And whenever I talk about the woman with the issue of blood, I pull from this book because there's a lot of information if you kind of want to just go ahead and be what I call that no surface preacher and go a little bit deeper. So um, Bishop, we're going to get right into it. And um, one of the first things I want to say again is welcome to you. And thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us on tonight. Um, I was just thinking a few minutes ago to myself that, you know, you and I have talked about ministry. We have talked about even um, some personal things in my life medically. You've been a great help to me. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, who would have ever thought that we would be sitting here talking about a pandemic, hmm. right? It's well, just, exactly right. It's, I say nobody saw this coming, but God. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, before we kind of, we're going to break this up into three segments. One is going to be COVID, the next is going to be vaccine, and then in-person worship, because you just have so much um, information to share, bridging that medical and that ministry together. But before we actually get into our very first questions on COVID, I want people just to know a little bit about you. I got a lot of questions to ask, so you know, you can be brief. But um how long have you been practicing medicine and in your position? And I know most people say, well, I already know what that is, but I want to let you share with us what is a pediatrician and what is a clinical hematologist? Okay, so technically I am a pediatric hematology oncology transplant specialist. Wow. I take care of children, young adults up to about age 35, 40, who have any kind of blood disease, whether it's white blood cells, red blood cells, cancer, um, tumors, those kind of things. And I also we also do bone marrow transplants. So again, that's my, my specialty is pediatrics. My subspecialty is hematology, oncology transplant. And I was for 25 years at Northwestern uh, in Lurie's Hospital, the director of the Comprehensive Sickle Cell Thalassemia Program. Big long words, all that means I took care of kids uh, and young adults with, blood, with specific blood diseases like sickle cell disease, uh, like thalassemia, we are the largest um, thalassemia center uh, in the Midwest, probably the fourth largest in the world. And so I directed all those, those programs for about 25 years. Now I mainly do, I mainly do hematology, some oncology and so forth. But uh, again, our um, association is at Northwestern University academically. Uh, in our division uh, at Children's, we have over 40 uh, specialists in hematology and oncology. We have specialists in specific uh, cancers, specific blood diseases, and then overall. So I do a lot uh, in that regard. Right now, I'm really doing only part-time. I mainly do teaching. Uh, I teach and train uh, young physicians. Uh, I have been uh, licensed as a physician since before all your viewers were born. Uh, <laughs> I got my degree in 1975. Wow. You can do it yourself. Uh, 45 years uh, of doing uh, uh, medicine. I've been in ministry. Uh, I've been a senior pastor at AFC. This is my 41st year. So they kind of dovetail. They go together. Yes. One year as a senior pastor, 
uh, 45 years of position and, and I love all of it. Wow, that's a lot, that's a lot of work. Especially as you just said, they kind of work together. So you kind of was running back and forth from the home to the hospital, from home to the church to the hospital for 40 something years. That's a long time. That's a long time. Okay, Bishop, well, let's get in it. Um, you did a panel discussion with Bishop Kenneth Omer. You and some other persons were on there. It was phenomenal. Um, as a matter of fact, it was so good. I reached out to you and I said, Bishop, this was excellent. Your presentation, what you shared, and just, you know, helping the saints as we begin to look at COVID, the vaccine, and, you know, returning back to our churches and things of that nature. And um, when we were talking on the phone, you began to share with me that you were in several rooms um, you know, they pulled you in because they wanted some black physicians and people such as yourself to be in a room. And just for our listening audience, just kind of share with them some of those tables that you sat at so they'll know that what you're saying is credible. Well, again, so uh, I am what's called an academic physician. That means that I'm not in private, I'm not in private practice. Uh, I have practiced for 45 years uh, at the university, which means that we are the forefront of clinical medicine. With the forefront of research, whether it be um, biological researches and other things like that. Uh, I've been the PI or principal investigator in a number of national and international studies. So you hear about these uh, COVID vaccine studies. Uh, I have been the principal investigator on a number of studies, not that one, but in hematology. So these are things that, that I've done for 45 years. Uh, the, the rigor that we have in medicine now demands that you have credentials and not only that you're a physician, but that you're a specialist and a subspecialist and you are boarded in a number of areas to say that you're at the top of the line when it comes to medical research, when it comes to academic uh, uh, positions, when it comes to patients and clinical practices. So those things are really important, which have allowed me, of course, to sit on a number of boards. I am one of the uh, Board of Health Commissioners in Chicago, so Chicago Board of Health. Uh, I've sat on the last two or three biologic uh, conferences that talk about how vaccines were developed. Uh, these in particular, I have done the analysis on looking at uh, how you develop any kind of vaccine and what are the rigorous steps you must undertake and make sure that those things were done and that no corners were cut, nothing was um, you know, uh, liquidated or nothing was diluted rather. So again, that's my background is in top of the line, front line, rigorous uh, knowledge about these things. You know, I, I quote scripture, uh, even in those settings that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Um, knowledge is power. Knowledge is deliverance. And without it, you can mean well, but not know well. And so uh, it is, it is uh, my privilege to, to sit on those kinds of forums. I've sat on them literally across the nation. I've, I've lectured at top universities, uh, black universities, Yale universities, you name it, I've been there, done presentations. And so uh, that's been my background as far as I believe how God called me to pastoring ministry, but also to international medical ministry. I've been to, I don't know how many countries around the world, uh, set up missions in Africa, been to India, Asia, been to leper colonies. So we do this um, not only because uh, it is our career uh, academically, but it really is our heart, our passion, and our calling. Um, one of the things we found out that the young lady that discovered the vaccine, if I'm saying it correctly, or you know whoever put it together, was Dr. Corbett, um, the black um, doctor, and that's mm -hmm. behind that. And of course, everybody knows Dr. F Fauci. Have you been yeah. in rooms with them in regard to this? Oh, oh absolutely. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Corbett and I have worked on different panels before. Yeah, Dr. Corbett is not, you know, again, really the discoverer, but Dr. Corbett did some of the um, uh, preliminary work uh, in uh, messenger RNA technology. So she's been uh, at the NIH, you know, she sits at those circles, very young black a woman, 35 years of age, and she, uh, she owns a couple of the, the original patents on the MRA technology. Again, it's one of my things I say to people who are reluctant because it's, it's, this is the white people doing this. Oh, no, no, no. These, these are some top of the line black folk at the forefront. Right. She's a, right. She's a virologist. She understands, uh, again, viruses from the beginning. And so, yeah, uh, it gives me a great deal of confidence. I've worked with these persons uh, on a number. I've let, worked in the state 
the federal and on the um, city level uh, with these uh, viruses and vaccines. Wow. Okay, well, let's get into it. You're the man for the hour. Um, Bishop, we're approaching the first anniversary of COVID-19. What can, and we've heard a lot about COVID and this particular one we're dealing with, and now we're moving into vaccines, but I'm curious to just ask you up front, um, what can you tell us about this new strand that we're hearing about? Well, you know, not, not even the new strand, let's go back to what this really is. Okay. You heard this in January. You, you kept hearing these terms called coronaviruses. You always, you always say, oh, that's new. No, we, we have worked with uh, in laboratories and different places with coronaviruses for at least 30, 40 years. Now, this COVID really is a SARS-2 vac. The SARS-2 virus is the pr proper name for what causes a disease called COVID-19. So coronaviruses in general, we've known about them, work with them, uh, for many, many decades. However, this particular one is a novel virus. You keep in the term novel. Novel yeah. means that this virus, and this is important for all of us that understand, again, immunology, a novel virus means that no human being had ever been exposed to this virus. Mm -hmm. I want you to keep that in, in mind when we talk about the vaccines. People say, because if my immune system is strong, I don't need it. It has nothing to do with your, your system being strong. If you have never been exposed to a virus, it means you are vulnerable to a virus. That means a pandemic in its strictest terms is every human being on the planet mm -hmm. is vulnerable to this virus because it's a, it's a novel virus. So you can't be immune to it until, until you get exposed, exposed to, it. to it. Right. Yeah. So it's a novel virus. So this, this happened again, and it transferred from the animal population to human beings. Somebody said, how could that be? This is not new. If you go back seven, six years ago, uh, President Obama, uh, with the, again, the CDC, had a section to talk about pandemics and new viruses. Mm -hmm. And coronaviruses were one of those they predicted. They predicted this, yes. that it would happen. In fact, we're going we're gonna to have another pandemic. That's, that's not new. When you hear about... Um, the Mediterranean virus, that was a new pandemic. You hear about Ebola, that was a, a, a new virus. Right. Well, new viruses are not new to scientists. They're, Dr. Fauci, uh, all these persons you, you mentioned, Dr. Corbett, they've been working with viruses for 40, 50 years. Mm. So again, it's new to us because we're, we're lay persons. That's understandable. But the point I'm trying to make is that every human being is vulnerable. It is a pandemic. The reason it didn't, didn't happen with Ebola they caught it early, they got people quarantined and treated, and so it didn't spread as widespread as this one. The problem with this one is that, especially in, in this country, yes, we yeah. heard about it, yeah, knew about it, and we did almost nothing about it. And that's why we're in trouble today. Absolutely. Lack of, not lack of knowledge, but arrogance with that knowledge mm. to make us ignore what the truth really is. Wow. Bishop, um, they're saying now that we're up to 4,000 deaths uh, a day, which, of course, if you time that by seven, you're looking at 28,000 people dying per week. California, as you, as you know, is just totally out of control. What do you think is the root cause of these extremely high numbers? But these high numbers, unfortunately, are not surprising to, to any of us in medicine. Not at all. Okay, go back to February 2020. The U.S. government knew about the pandemic in China, knew about the coronavirus, was informed about it, all right? If we had done what we're doing now, distancing, masks, hand washing, the prediction back in February for the U.S., because we have all these resources, scientists, great medical you know, setups, it was predicted we would lose less than 40,000 people to COVID in a year. We have lost 10 times. We've lost True. almost 400,000 Americans. American. Now you quoted 4,000, you were being very kind. Right. That's in America, right. around the world. Last week in America, 4,000, um, 23,000 Americans died from COVID-19. Around the world, 
We're losing over 10,000 people every single day. And again, I, I'm talking loud because I, I just can't believe that people are fighting things like vaccines and therapies in the midst of thousands dying every single day because they say they don't know about the vaccine. Well, we know about what's happening. Today, 4,000 Americans died. Tomorrow, 4,000 Americans are going to die. If we would had done these practices before, we would not have these people dying now. That's just the plain truth. But we ignored it. We were arrogant. I'll, I'll give one illustration. Back in March, scientists at the US and other places, the WHO, World Health Organization, got together because they knew about this pandemic and they were afraid for continents like Africa. They said, Africa is so fragile and has so little resources. And we predicted, you know, that hundreds of thousands would die in Africa. Guess what? They haven't and still haven't because even though they don't, they don't have the scientific uh, level of sophistication, they do what they're supposed to do because the infrastructure from the people on the ground, they obey them. They hand wash, they wear masks, they do distancing. Uh, South Africa has a, almost a pristine record in how few deaths in wow. a year from COVID. But the U.S. is being overrun. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not because we don't have the resources. It's because our culture, our mentality gets in the way of truth and knowledge. Even today, there are people who won't wear a mask and they've made masks political. Masks have nothing to do with your politics. It has to do with the virus. Mm -hmm. That's not political, that's human. So again, there are all these factors that we don't always look at to put in perspective why we're being overrun. And, I, and again, this was predicted, if you understand, remember back in March when New York mm -hmm. was the US epicenter. Yes. But New York clamped down mm -hmm. and their numbers went almost down to almost nothing. Yeah, they flattened the curve as they said. But in California, mm -hmm. you know, they said, well, we're fine. No, you're not. And, and the minute they, they, un they allow people large gatherings, no mass, now we're paying a price. Explosion, yeah. And people are dying. And, and, and again, I want to say to all your viewers, these deaths can be prevented. They can be, even today, if we will begin to follow the science that God has given us. Mm -hmm. True knowledge comes from God. If, if the knowledge is true, it did not come from Satan. Mm -hmm. It came from the Lord. Now, we don't always give God the credit, but he gets the glory because he is the author of all knowledge. The knowledge God has given us, we can protect ourselves and begin to come out from this unusual circumstances, but we've got to do it you, what God intended, unified, caring for each other and so forth. Bishop, um, and speaking in regard to mass, one of the things that they've been talking about is when you aspirate, it's very possible that you can um, catch the COVID, the virus. So I want to ask you, um, if we sneeze, if we sing, uh, is it true that you can get it from semen? Is it true that it can aspirate if you don't put down the lid to the toilet? Can you speak to things like that? Yeah, we have to be very careful. Um, and I don't want to be too technical, but let me just say this. The SARS-2 coronavirus is mainly, M-A-I-N-L-Y, what's called a respiratory virus. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I am for hand washing, cleansing, all that. But most folks are not going to get COVID from touching something. But it's something we, we can all do and we can minimize it. Mm -hmm. You get COVID from COVID being in the respiratory tract, nose, mouth of people. So, of course, if I'm talking very softly, then guess what? If I had the virus, it can only go so far. Mm -hmm. I'm talking louder, it goes further. If I sneeze, it goes further. If I sing, it goes further. So what do masks do? Masks, by and large, and they're pretty effective, up to 92%, make sure if you had COVID, you keep it to yourself. <laughs> okay. You wear a mask to protect other people. Hmm. And, and so there, I don't want to get into technical, but there are levels of masks. The cloth masks work. I was going to ask you about that as well. Absolutely. They, they work as far as keeping what you have to you. Mm -hmm. If you are a medical practitioner and dealing with patients who have COVID, you need to have a mask only that protects you for other people, but protects their virus from you. So you may need an N95. 
Yes. Respiratory, because those are much more complex to keep us in the air from you. But yes. for the general public, I will get, I'm going to say this, and I was about, thought about this when I came on today. This is like, what, nine months, 10 months into COVID, 11 months. I have never worn an N95 mask because I don't need to. I have them. Mm -hmm. But at the hospital where I am, we, we know what wards are positive, which ones are not. I wear regular medical masks, which is very protective, and, and I'm COVID-free. So you have to know, again, what's important where. So people should wear masks, a face covering. If they do that and keep distancing, they're going to resolve most of COVID. Now, can you get it from semen? No. I mean, can you get it from um, blood? Not really. You you You... It, it's almost impossible. It, I remember in the old days, I took care of kids, people with HIV in the, in the early 80s. And uh, I remember with syphilis and gonorrhea, people said, I got it from the toilet wow. seat. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You got it from having sex and you pass mucus from person to person. You did not get it from a doorknob or a toilet seat. You know, those things are extraneous. Okay. Can it happen? Technically it can, but it, does it happen? No, you get it from here so again. That's really important. Cover your nose and fit around your mouth to keep those things in. And that is, is very protective. Okay, um, we got a lot to do here, so let me move on. Um, let's just say a person does contract um, the virus. Is it possible that once they kind of come through it that they can contract it twice? If they, We're not even getting to the vaccine yet, we're just talking about COVID. Is that possible? There, there, yeah, there have been a number of documented cases beginning with China and now even in the U.S. And remember, remember the limits of any test. No test is 100%. So technically, we have seen somebody who had a positive PCR, which is an antigenic test to COVID. Two months later, they test negative. And then six months later, they test positive again. The question there is, did they get it twice? We think they did. We don't know for sure. Could it be that they had it, they got over it, but it was subclinical, and then it resurfaced? That's possible, too. There are some things about COVID we don't know 100%. But it's still new, as you said. It's still new. But we, we know to a high degree of accuracy most things. You know, somebody said that about not only the vaccines, but other things. We don't know everything about it. We, the truth is, we don't know everything about aspirin. We don't know everything about a common cold. So this everything mentality does not help us to deal in an effective way with this pandemic. They said, I don't know everything about the vaccine. You got your measles vaccine. You don't know anything about it. Right. You got a mumps vaccine. You got a chicken box vaccine. You know, I meant to bring you know my little booklets downstairs too. Well, we're, we're using a, a a thinking methodology that only causes us to keep caught in a loop. And then we get trapped. And every day and every week we wait, people are dying. The devil loves that. Keep on talking about it. I don't know enough about it. Yeah, well, people are dying every day. Well, that's why we have this forum. Let me move right on. At this juncture, um, Bishop, should we be equally concerned about small children getting COVID? We, we've we heard a lot about the elderly. Some of us on here have lost a loved one. I've lost a loved one. Um, but these small children we're hearing about, before they told us we didn't have to worry about small children. What do you say in regard to that? Well, I would say this, that there, there are clearly certain demographics that are more vulnerable than others. It happens in every disease that we know about. Okay. There's some people more prone to lung cancer. Okay, so it's not a, it's not as if a disease, if you get exposed to it, everybody has the same chance of getting it. That simply is not true with any disease. COVID is no different. Mm -hmm. Young children tend to either not get it, or they get an asymptomatic case where they are not clinically sick. First point is, however, they can be asymptomatic and spread it to somebody older who is vulnerable. One of the issues about teachers are concerned about that young kids mm -hmm. uh, have a low rate of getting COVID. But if you're their teacher and you're 55, you can get it from them. And so that's a risk factor. Let me go back to your question. The, 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 the issue of children, they can get it. And we have some kids 
-hmm. who have died from COVID. So I tell people, it's not an all or none. So if you know that and you can prevent it, so we say anybody age two or higher should wear a mask Mm -hmm. because there are gradations of vulnerability, but no one is totally exempt from it. So that's why in nursing homes, they're the first ones to get vaccinated because their risk at 85 is astronomical. Mm. So again, anybody can get COVID. I, the saddest cases, I, saddest cases I've looked at sometime about three weeks ago, this young kid was in college and he went to a COVID event. He and his friends had a COVID party knowing they had wait, no wait, 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 wait. What does that mean? That means everybody that has it should show up? The, the people that had it, they knew they were positive. Their kids that, that went to that party, they thought they were invulnerable. This kid got it, and, and the week before he died, he on news, he said, I got this from bad judgment. I went to a COVID party, I got COVID, and, and after that was shown on TV, the next week he died. So I'm saying you can't be cavalier about this, mm-hmm. even though your risk may be small. Right. You, you know, I, again, I deal with people with cancer. I can remember a, a child would be diagnosed with a certain cancer, and we'd say to, to the parents, well, this is 95% curative. They'd be very happy, and they should be. Here's what late people don't understand. If I tell you that this cancer is 95% curative, it means if 100 people have this cancer, 95 will live, but guess what? Five are going to die. If your kid's that one out of five, it don't matter it's 95%, your kid's dead. So percentages are important only in the context of risks. You may remember the president said this back in April. He said, what's wrong with COVID? Only 1% of the people die. And he was correct. But he misinformed people. I asked I ask your viewers this. How many people on this planet? 7.7 billion, right? Hmm. Do the math. What's 1% of 7 billion? 70 million people. You want those people off? It's 1%. But they're all dead. So you got to be careful even with those numbers that the numbers by themselves out of context will get you in trouble. That's, that's good, Bishop. Um, one last question in regard to COVID. We've been hearing a lot about um, trying to sanitize your house. We're going to get to the church, but just sanitizing okay. your house and the products and they running out of Clorox and Lysol and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what would you say to our viewers in regard to household products? If you want to kind of keep your house sanitized and kind of keep yeah. it corona free, which is the best household product you would suggest? I, I won't answer that. I'll tell you this. <laughs> okay. Two years ago, if your house was clean, do the same thing and your house will be clean now. Okay. We, we, I'm not knocking anything again. Clorox, those people have made buku money. It's not not their fault. I I, I know early on, I'll give you an example. Some friends of mine said, well, in my house, uh, we bought this bleach and all that. I thought if your house was clean before and you clean it the same way now, you won't get COVID from a dirty house. You, you, you don't get COVID that way. So should you clean surfaces? Of course you could, you should. But no one did you did before. Because if you do deep cleaning, and some of my pastors said, you know, I have them come in after every service, do deep cleaning. I said, you can do that, but I, I'll take that money from you that you're paying for all that. You know, one guy said, I said, when was the last time you had church? Oh, three months ago. I said, so why deep clean it? They can't, there cannot be COVID in your church if you didn't have service for, for a month, COVID nobody is created by people. Right. It, it can't be in your church. So again, I, I'm simply saying, we it's like when people bought all this toilet paper during COVID. I went, what's that for? You, you know, we can overdo things. So again, if you, if you, I somebody this weekend in my church and had gloves on. I said, what's those gloves for? To keep clean. You mean from COVID? Because if it's from COVID, you are no less at risk with those gloves on than with the gloves off. In fact, we think as scientists, you're more prone because when you have gloves on, you don't wash your hands. Mm. Now at the end of the day, you didn't wash your hands. You've been touching all kinds of stuff. It's on your hands. You touch your mouth. Right. So if you have your, don't have gloves and you wash your hands just in warm water, you're good. So again, you got to understand that what feels better may or may not be. So you can go too far in cleaning. You really can. Okay, so just basically keep doing what we're doing. Distancing, uh, respiratory, right? Mass, you, you're gonna be you're gonna be good to go. 
Okay. We're going to move into our second part, which is the vaccine part. Bishop, as a pastor and a doctor, what would you say is the most concerning thing that people of color in particularly is concerned about or conversation they've shared with you in regard to the vaccine? Well, you, you know, you know, again, and to be totally insightful, it's not that black and brown people don't trust the vaccine, although they don't. Let me get to that. This is not a specific COVID issue, although it is, is in part. I was on a show with the governor of, of Illinois some months ago because he heard me make this statement. I said this to, to my audience. Health care and health disparities is always a trust issue. True. So let's say you live next to New York University, which has the highest standards of medicine in the world. If you don't trust those people, you ain't going there mm -hmm. until you almost fallen down dead. Then you might go. Very good. Because healthcare means I trust who I go to. Mm. So if you don't trust me and you come out with a therapy, I ain't gonna trust it either because I don't trust you. So right. it's not a new problem. The, the truth of the matter is we, we, as black and brown people, we have a healthy skepticism about science and medicine because of some historical egregious things that has happened to us. The number one that's always mentioned is Tuskegee. Right. Let's deal with that. I said to my friends, when did Tuskegee occur? Mm -hmm. 70 years ago. When did they end Tuskegee? Back in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. That's 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. If you allow your reasoning to be determined by 50 years ago, you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. What has happened since then? There are safeguards in medicine. There are safeguards in these studies that they can't do what they did to those Black men back in Tuskegee, which really was would not you Tuskegee. Be able, would you be able to share one with us? What, some of those things? One of those, one of those safeguards? Would you be able right to now, to do any clinical study, there's at least 10 major principles you must agree to or you cannot launch the study. There's something called informed consent. Again, I was a PI on a number of studies. I had to develop a- Tell us what that is again. What a PI is a principal investigator. In other words, I'm, I was the guy in charge of the whole study. Mm -hmm. So for me to get subjects to agree to the study, and when you mean subjects, you mean people that people that say, say I volunteer for it. All right. And, 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 and let me just say this about a study because we don't like that word either. They say it means you're a guinea pig. Mm -hmm. Every advance in medicine from day one has been mainly because of studies. Right. These things are not new. COVID is new, but stu clinical studies are not new. Mm -hmm. It is how we advance medicine. Quick, quick uh, illustration. I start training in 1971 in medical school. The five-year survival of common leukemia in kids, five-year survival, was less than 15%. Today, that same disease in kids, 95% survive. Wow. Why is that? Clinical studies. Mm -hmm. We did the studies 20 years ago, 30 years ago. We learned, oh, this, this is better than that. So we changed the therapy. Mm -hmm. Same thing with these studies. And now the safeguards. This was called an IRB. You just look it up. In, uh, it, it is an investigational research tool that before a study can be approved, you must go to the IRB, which are scientists and community people from, from every community that looks at your study and says, does it look right to us? That's one. The other is informed consent. To advertise for people to sign up, you must have an informed consent, which means you must tell them the pros and cons of the study. And when they sign it, they have to know at any time they can back out of the study with no repercussions. And if they have any questions during the study, number three, there's an independent scientist who is not a part of the study they can call, not you. These safeguards are in place. I had to go through those when I did my, my studies. Every university has to do that. Hmm. So there are safeguards that Tuskegee couldn't happen again. So I understand our fear, but the fear now is not valid. You okay. pointed out, if you get COVID, the entire lineage of the development, you can cite intelligent, professional black people who have been at the forefront 
of the technology, the studies, the vaccines, the distribution, all wow. of it. Wow. It gives me great confidence. Hey, if, if they say we looked at it from stem to stern and it's good, I'm good. They're the best in the business and mm -hmm. they're black folk and Hispanic folk. So I'm saying to people, you've got to trust the latest knowledge. Don't let your fear dictate your decision because it will not protect you from, mm -hmm. the, from the facts. That's good. So yeah, so I think that people- Keep right that down. Okay, six months ago in, in my pulpit, you can go to my website and look at it. I said this to my church. One of the institutions was Northwest University. They were developing a vaccine for COVID. I knew they were. I, ca I called the, the PI and said, how are you doing? He said, Horace, we're having a terrible time getting black folk and Hispanics to sign up. I called my churches and said, put out a, on, on Facebook, Instagram, I want my people to sign up for the study. You might say, why would you do that? I knew they're going to develop a vaccine. I did not want them to do it without Black participation. Mm. Because I want to make sure when they say it's effective, I know they can say that not from supposition, but that Black folk participated. Right. And, and people protected. that you knew, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so now if you look, look at uh, the two vaccines that have been approved, in mm -hmm. one study, I think it was something like 10%. Um, 12% African American, other one 15%. Yes, that, that makes me feel good that when they say it's effective, that means even in black people. Mm -hmm. There's some medicines, medicines today that black folk take that don't work because we were not involved in those studies. Mm -hmm. and they don't work in us. And it's not always 100% like that, but again, if you want a therapy to work, then you must participate in its development. So when they do the numbers, they can say these numbers work in this demographic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I am I'm totally all in because there are safeguards uh, to it. But another point is really important. We talked about Dr. Corbett. Mm -hmm. The AMA is the largest medical association in the world. Yeah, right? just, just tell us what that is. You know, we all American, that. right. American Medical Association has millions of doctors who belong to it. But there's also some called the NMA, National Medical Association. These are all black and brown physicians and scientists. Okay. It is the largest gr group of those. But what is that number like? Oh, well over 200,000. Black physicians? Oh yeah, oh wow. yeah. Well, go to their website and check it out. What is it? N uh, just put in NMA, National Medical Association. You can pull it up right now as, as we're talking. National Medical Association. That's what my husband's been on. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, keep no, talking. Oh, yes. I'm telling people that these things are not known to people, but I know about them. These are black folk. So six months ago, the president of the NMA developed a 40 member task force for one reason, to look at these vaccines before they are approved, to go through every step of their development and make sure that they are safe. They did that. Wow. They came out and said, both the Pfizer and the Moderna are safe and effective. These are black people saying this, wow. all right? These are black folk. If the, if the black scientists have looked at it tooth and nail and, have, and not getting paid for it, you can't trust them? Third mm -hmm. point, whether it's Meharry, whether it's, um, uh, let me go to Howard, mm -hmm. uh, all of the top nationally traditional black universities. Now when you say Howard, you mean Howard University? Howard University, yeah, yeah. These are the these are the creme de the, the, the creme in black academia. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you go to their website, they participated in the studies. And the presidents of these universities, you, you can go independently to the university and see, they will tell you these vaccines have been properly developed and tested and are safe for black and brown people. These these are our universities. So if if the woman, the, the black girl Corbett shouldn't call a girl, master yeah. scientist did the, did the technology. If the NMA have looked at and scrutinized it, if the black colleges have participated, so who are you gonna trust? If you can't trust them, it's over, it's over all of us. These are people that are not making money on this. They know the facts, they've looked at it. So I'm saying to the people, not because I'm in love with Moderna or Pfizer. Right. And I do know, as you talked about this conversation today, 
4,000 Americans died and too many of them are black and brown. I want that death to stop. I know that's right. I know that's right, Bishop. Um, a lot of people say right in that vein, a lot of people say that the vaccine was made too quickly. <laughs> you know, I know you talked about that a little, but just kind of share that a little bit again. <laughs> well, let me just say this. If 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 somebody's attacking you on the street and they call 911, are you going to say, they came too quick? <laughs> I mean, your life is being threatened and they came in 30 seconds. Man, I don't trust these police. They came too quickly. Really? Really? I mean, people are dying in, in your family. You know that. Now, let, let me let me address the human uh, typically say it's too quick. I understand that. It takes five to seven years, really, yeah, in normal times mm -hmm. to develop a vaccine. Mm -hmm. People are correct in that. So here's a, a pertinent question. How do you do it so quickly? Well, I can, I can spend 20 minutes talking about it, I won't. Here's mm -hmm. number one. What people don't know is, from Dr. Fauci, to Dr. Corbin and others, they knew about coronaviruses. They had been doing studies on these viruses before the pandemic hit. Within a month of the pandemic, they had already worked out the entire DNA structure of this virus. They were two years ahead of the game when they started. Wow. Number two, and this will help us who are skeptics, Black people especially. The reason that these companies take so long, the steps are, you develop the vaccine, you test it. If it works, you manufacture it. Those, for those of you who've gotten your, your vaccine, Moderna or Pfizer, you're getting vaccine that was really produced, was, was manufactured months ago. Years before. Wow. Now watch this. Here, here's, here's the key, key issue here. These companies need to make money, right? Mm -hmm. They take a big risk to put millions of dollars into development and then the vaccine doesn't work. Mm. To, the, to the U.S. government's credit, I hate to give them credit, but it's true. They went to these companies and said, look, we will pay you $2 billion up front. Mm -hmm. And they paid them mm -hmm. to develop and manage the vaccine before it was tested. And they said, if it doesn't, if the vaccine turned out not to work, you got your money. So the economic risk of these companies is almost zero. They were paid up front. So they manage, that's why we got 20 million doses right now because they, they they had already manufactured those right. doses. Been working overnight. So the, the, the technology was worked out in mRNA. The DNA was known, the genome of the virus. Mm -hmm. the, the, the economic risk was taken out of it. And they paid people staff so that instead of having somebody working eight hours a day, mm -hmm. they had three rotations of scientists working 24 seven because they could pay them. They got the money. Right. So, so I understand it was too fast. Hey, if you if you pay me a thousand dollars an hour, right? You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I understand the fear, but the fear is unfounded. Mm. These well, folks, that's why we need you. I'm so these folks got that's paid. Cool. These folks are getting paid. The reason that the vaccine is is free, because the government took your taxes and paid for it. So right in there, Bishop. Let me ask you. So we we got the Pfizer and we have the Moderna. Right now, um, you just said that when they were working that there was a possibility that it didn't work was that right. the issue with johnson and johnson because I'm well, that now well, they're releasing something else not only the, the issue with johnson and johnson it, it was when when astrazeneca mm -hmm. when johnson and johnson halted their trials mm -hmm. yes people said, people said see there's a problem no that's a positive sign that meant that every company moderna pfizer they had to follow the rules mm. and the minute there's a problem, they would shut them down. That's a good thing. Yeah. So they had to shut them down. Right. They have redeveloped their vaccine. Yes. And if you come out, Eating they'll it. be scrutinized yes. and then mm -hmm. they'll they'll pass it. It should give us great confidence. Yes. They were not saying, I don't care if it is dangerous, keep on going forward. No. In Britain, they stopped the trial for a month when one guy got sick with a serious oh. disease because the safeguards are in place. Yeah. Got you. We, if we don't get nothing else tonight, we got that. So I'm saying to people, I understand your fears, mm -hmm. but here's, here's what I would say to all of your viewers. In any subject that in your life, if you need, if you don't know information about it, you have an opinion about it, but it's uninformed. 
The only way for you to get better is, is to get the right information and then reform your opinion. Not like some of these people on, on Facebook who are influencers who say, I don't care what they say, I ain't taking it. That's ignorant. Mm. You don't care what they say. If you get the right information and it's different than what you think, oh, you ain't gonna change your mind. Right. You, you, that, that's a problem too. <laughs> I, I am not gonna condone ignorance whether it's black, brown, yellow, white, or red. Knowledge, Jesus said what? Know the what? Truth. And the truth, the truth that we need about our government, about the vaccines, about COVID, and the more truth we have, the safer we're going to be. True. Bishop, I have a question down here. Um, what would you say to those who wish not to take the vaccine? But I think you basically explained that. I, I, I'll, I'll ask them why not, because again, think about this in this context. If you don't get the vaccine, it means you're vulnerable. You can get COVID and spread it to your loved ones too, cause you didn't want to take it. In other words, I, I, I would ask them, why would they not take it? What What is it that's factual to keep you from taking it? Ask those people, have they gotten other vaccines? I, I, may, I may have told you before we started. That's what I thought, cause I got a I was, big old. <laughs> hey, I was at the hospital last week and some of, some of our um, nurses that, that I deal with and other people that work in the clinic said to me, hey, doc, you got the vaccine? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. They said, should we get it? Now, they, they have some knowledge. Mm -hmm. I said, let me, I, I had about 15 of these nurses. I said, now you guys are average age about 25. I will guarantee you that everyone y'all have gotten at least 30 vaccines before. They said, you're right. I said, and not, not, not one time did it's you say, I ain't gonna take the vaccine. And, and those diseases was not killing people. Yes. This one is killing folks. Four thousand people a like, day. They all said. They said, "Forest, you make powerful sense." I said, "You've gotten forty vaccines in your life. If you're going to to do mission work in Asia, you're gonna get vaccinated." vaccinated exactly. right? mm -hmm. So why would you reject the vaccine that the virus is killing people? I'm, I'm wondering what is it you're afraid of. So let's so let's go into it deeper with the vaccine. Okay, so we made up in our minds that we're going to get the vaccine. Now, yeah. where do we go to get vaccinated? The doctor's office, Walgreens, CVS, where do we go? It is different for every state, and that's the unfortunate. If I go back to the first mistake we made in the U.S. government, the present president could have been the greatest hero in the world if he, at the beginning of the knowledge they gave him in February, said, this is a dangerous virus, we as a nation, mm -hmm. nationally, mm -hmm. are going to adopt A, B, and C. We would be working today out front, nothing, because we had a unified plan. Yeah, that's true. If you look at every state, we got 50 states. So Virginia is different than New York, and New York is different than Illinois. And, and, and I tell people, the virus don't say, oh, I'm from Illinois, I, think I can't cross over to Indiana. You need a national a plan. Unfortunately, we don't have one. So second best is every state has to get CDC guidelines and they're different. So we don't know. My wife asked me today, when am I going to get my vaccine? I couldn't tell her for sure. I knew what category she's in as far as her age, her comorbidities. But again, the rollout has been a problem because here's what the federal government did again. They pay for the vaccine. Yeah. They didn't pay for people to be trained to get the vaccine. Mm. They, they sent these states the vaccines and didn't send funding to train the people to get a vaccine. Yeah, but well, now they're ramping up getting people right, you know, right. how to get a vaccine. New York today, I know I'm coming with you. I looked it up. The, the, the mayor of New York said, we need another 500,000 doses and we have the apparatus to give it within a few days. Mm -hmm. They're ready. They realize mm. we've got to protect our people. Up. Right. <laughs> I would say to them, just go to your state, you know, here in Illinois, is, is Illinois.gov. Okay. Give you a breakout because you're right. Hospitals are different. All of them must be vaccinated, but then they're giving it to local um, nursing homes, then number three, essential workers, then number four, mo for most people, it's going to either be Walgreens or your doctor will be informed about how many doses they'll get. Then you can make an appointment and get your vaccine. 
Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. So for yeah. the most part, it'd be by appointment. It's not like you walking in. Well, it, it should be by appointment, but what has happened, like even in New York and I think in Florida, is such a, pand a, a rush. They have opened up walk-in sites for people. Now, because should we like, trust those? Should we trust those? I would. If it's the gov if, if it really is through the U.S. government, you can How trust. do we know? Is there emblem? How do we know it's legit? I, I would say you should, you should query your, again, whether it's your alderman, whether it's your, I don't know who the local precinct captains are, Mm -hmm. Your medical, your, your physician, and say, is this legit? And you will find out quickly that what is and what isn't. Got to be. You, it's a good point you make. Already, there's a black market. I can tell you yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. The, the day, the day that ago. the day that Pfizer was approved, I know this for sure. There were companies with money mm -hmm. who called Pfizer yeah. and said, "We'll pay you more to get moved up." For the vaccine. Yeah. And then they're bootleggers that don't have a real vaccine. So you, you're right. That's why I said it before. These things are all trust issues. We need black leaders to get informed. Mm -hmm. The people can call them and they can say to them, hey, A, B, and C, because right. they trust us. Right. Because folk are afraid when they hear voices that don't look like them, don't right. sound like exactly. them. I, I, I told the medical people here in, in Chicago, I said, you guys are great. I, I can say this directly. But but your skin, they, I said, you can have all the knowledge you want. They ain't going to believe you. You need us on there with you to say, in fact, let us do the talking and you just say amen. <laughs> exactly. you know, I told them that. I said, you want to be effective? Get trusted black leaders that folk know to say, you know, get Chance the Rapper, get get Beyonce to say, hey, y'all. Right. Let's, let's do it. Right. Why? Because you care about black people. Because you didn't just start caring about black people. Trust means you've earned it over time period of time exactly. so you know all the science, science in the world won't work if i don't trust you it's so true bishop and again it goes back to what i said in the beginning is that when you did the um panel discussion which i would definitely um suggest to everybody to go watch it download it right Ken Allman, and there's a number of physicians with me on there and, right. and so forth we'll talk about all these things, yeah. It's great, but when we had our conversation and you started telling me you was in this room, this room, and you were suggesting to them about ads and all these different things, you know, for black people in our neighborhoods and different things, I said, wait a minute now, because you, I trust you, you understand? Me, so this, I you. This, this, this is very personal. And I was in this discussion today with a person. I have to admit, I'm from a Pentecostal background. Mm -hmm. When I was, 17 years old, I told the saints, you see, I'm a saints doctor, uh -huh. I want to be a doctor. You know what they told me in my church? You can't be no doctor. We don't believe in doctors. We believe in Jesus. A month later, my pastor, who was way ahead of his time, said to me, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. He said, no, you're depressed. I said, well, I did tell the saints I want to be a doctor. He said, what they tell you? I said, they told me I can't be a doctor. He said, Horace, those people told you that? Those are good people. And they did wrong. Boy, stay in school. <laughs> then in the day, I realized that God has all of us in our places mm. prepared mm. before the trouble starts. Mm. I had to repent myself saying, when I was question God, why you make me a pastor? And I went through 15 years of training and all that. Now I know. Yes. There is no question that the, the pandemic stuff, I knew that I was in the circles before it started. Mm -hmm. Train physicians, mm -hmm. so they can see they can just tell me something. I say, oh yeah, exactly. fine. No, oh, hold up, I, I know the question to ask them. Who's in charge of it? What is the protocol? Because I I do that, mm -hmm. but that's how God I believe makes a way for us if we will listen to the way God. Sometimes we want to tell God how to deliver us. Right. Have no right to tell God I don't want to do it that way. You got to do it the way God provides. So. <laughs> I agree with you 100%, and I'm just so glad that I have your number in my phone, and I was able to call you because I kept oh, telling yeah, my you, friends, we don't know a physician who we can call up and ask these questions, and I'm just so grateful that you took the time out. I want to move on because I want to kind of get to all of this, and there's some other questions. You mean there's more? I mean as well. Yes. Um, any concerns about those who take the vaccine if they also take other medication? regards to side effects, like how should they yes. do that? Well, again, this is a general rule in medicine. Mm -hmm. If you have any diagnosis, if you're on any medicine, you're 
they, they before you get the vaccine, I, I've gotten my vaccine. Mm -hmm. They require even me to fill out the form. What do you have? Are you in any medicines? What are they? Okay. They want to know that up front. They want to know your risk. So you want to be honest when you're filling it out. Totally honest. What you don't want to do is not tell them because then something happens. They didn't know. You have to, it, it's called again, informed consent. Let them know what you have. Mm -hmm. People have asked me this. One of my uh, friends at the hospital is a nurse and she's pregnant. She said, should I get the, vi the, the vaccine? I said, talk to your doctor because mm -hmm. if your risk personally is very high, you should get it. If your risk is low, she can wait because she's in, in the second trimester to have the baby. So all these things are relative. It's based on your case. So you have to divulge to people what, you know, when you talk about this thing about um, allergies. Mm -hmm. Well, an allergy is not an allergy. It's not an allergy. So some allergies because, you know, pollen, I, I allergic to it or, or cats, they don't mean that. They mean anaphylaxis, which is way at this end of allergies. Okay. So if you've got that history, you may have to wait to get your vaccine. But you just got asthma, you've got, you know, I don't, I'm allergic to fish or whatever. You, talk to your doctor, he'll say, your risk of COVID is at this level. Your risk of allergy is at this level. So we'll still give you the vaccine, but we're going to watch you in our office half an hour to make okay. sure you're okay. So there are things to do to prevent okay. untoward, you know, reactions to it. Yes. And that's just wisdom again, to make okay. sure you're safe. Yeah, that's why these are real questions and people have been asking them. That's why I want to oh, put yeah. them out there. And that's another reason why I raised the question about where do you get the vaccine? Because if you go to Walgreens, because they said they were going to have you go to these pharmacies. So if you go to Walgreens or you go to CVS, will they be asking you the same questions or no? It, not only that. Now, here's here's the point that, you know, I have to be careful because people with, with these conspiracy theories, they were saying, well, you the vaccine, you're going to be tracked. You are going to be tracked. For your good. So whether it's Walgreens, CVS, wherever you go, there's going to be a standard sheet that you must fill out. Okay. It's mine. It's on, it's, it's on my phone right now. I got my vaccine. Fill out the sheet. The next hour, bloop, ask me all these questions. Okay. And then every day of the first week after the vaccine, they had eight questions. How do you feel? Do you have fever? Yeah. Now, is that for everybody? Everybody. Okay, for everybody. those of you that are watching us that's already been vaccinated, let us know if they gave you something that came up on your phone as well. Yeah, Put they, it in the they, they can't demand you do it, but they're asking you to do it for the safety of everybody. I'm going to be able to track, make you sure you collect okay. data to say this many got fever, this many, you know, it helps other people. So yes, I see they, they need to track you. I got my second dose the next hour. Bring it came up, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Smith. Please, questions. that's called good medicine. Yes, I got you. It's the kind of medicine that black folk should be getting all the time, but we're not getting it. Mm -hmm. Is that's the vaccine free for all United States citizens? Absolutely. Okay. If they tell you differently, they're lying to you because the government paid, you know, and they, they didn't do you a favor. They took your tax dollars and paid for it. <laughs> you paid for it already. And so let me ask you this. Do you think that maybe months or maybe a year down the line that eventually they're going to have us pay for the vaccine if you don't get it, like, say, to a year late? Because I heard in another country, I think it's India, don't quote me on it, that they were only giving out 300 and something thousand vaccines and then people would have to pay. Well, yeah, that, 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 that really, let me break that question down and I'll talk to you at, from my standpoint as a physician and as a pastor. Sure. My concern right now at the vaccine is that I know that the U.S. government in this country is filthy rich. So yeah, they pay for every American to get the vaccine. But I'm not a preacher to Americans. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a pastor to the world. I want to know, what about those kids in India? that can, And they can't pay for it. The, right. the, the real prayer we should be having now is, God, make this country and others like us graceful enough to pay for the vaccine for the kids in South America. They can't pay for it. Mm -hmm. Should we let them get COVID? Should we let the people in India that I, that I missed who get COVID because they can't pay for it? Mm -hmm. Is a human life worth less because they don't have a dollar? So I, my concern right now, and, and, the, and, and, and to the to credit of WHO again, there is a committee on WHO who has been looking at how to identify for all these companies millions of doses of free vaccine 
for co countries that can't afford it. We, if, if you're a true Christian, you care about folk in Timbuktu. Right. Right. You can't say, well, we got vaccinated. I don't care about them. Right. I wonder about the Holy Spirit. Dying. Yeah. People are dying. So we've got to make sure that this pandemic gets addressed in a pandemic way. That because you're right, the econ if you, if you make it economic, where they have to pay for it, mm -hmm. folks are going to die for lack of a dollar. That's a, that's a, to me, that's a terrible tragedy. Absolutely. And just to be clear, Bishop, you know, there are some people that don't want to take it or whatever, but it's not mandatory that you take it, right? It's not. Okay. It, just now, now there'll be. I'll guarantee you this: it's not in this country. There's some countries you will get vaccinated mm. because that's the kind of government they have. So ours is good and bad because the thing about society and, and, you know, we're doing this thing in our, this month on solemn assembly called communion. Mm -hmm. Communion is about fellowship. Mm -hmm. So I am my brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. If I feel like my rights as an individual are more important than the group, then stop saying you believe in Konaniah. You don't believe in fellowship. Mm -hmm. You believe in individualism. That's an anti-Christian view. Absolutely. Christians care for the greater community, True. not the individual. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a right in this country not to take it. I think it's a bad decision. And so keeping right there with it being mandatory for all um, American citizens, and it's not, it's but not. is it mandatory for all health professionals? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's going to be, you already know this, it's going to be because they don't want you Take care of patients, and you may be a carrier of a right, virus. Right. Well, you look. Yesterday, um, was it? I think it was United Delta. They're going to start requiring. Yeah. You to prove not only that you're COVID negative, but that you've been vaccinated to get on these planes. What? Yeah, so the CDC. No, it just came out yesterday in the CDC. Everybody. They're going to be, they're gonna be the United States. They're going to be vaccinated. Well, that's coming in. They're going to start doing it for you to go somewhere else. Right, exactly. If you have not been vaccinated, they are not going to let you go to these countries and and, and be potentially infective. Mm -hmm. So it may not be mandatory, but it's wise. Right now, if, you, if you're in a daycare setting, you must get certain vaccinations because you cannot be spreading stuff to kids mm -hmm. who are vulnerable. So it makes some sense that some things are man mandatory depending on where you work and what your career is. Yeah, I had a whole list of, um, you know, healthcare professionals, people in the EMS, and they also said funeral directors, anybody that worked with bodily fluids. There you go. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. And, and that's just wisdom for society. You, you, you know, it's hard to have confidence in being safe if key people could be carriers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there a difference between, I know the two major ones is Pfizer and, and Moderna. Those are the two on the market, right? I think going there. <laughs> um, but those are the only two we should be hearing about or should be presented no. to us, right? No, Here's okay. The there's at least, okay, worldwide. No, in America, in America. But number one, worldwide, right now, there are at least 30 different companies and trials going on for COVID-19 vaccines. Okay. In a few years, it's gonna be so widespread. Right. My fear in this country is that people would say, I don't want co I don't want Pfizer, I want AstraZeneca. Right. You know, don't mess things up. If it's been approved by the FDA, okay. effective, take it. It's almost like designer jeans. I only wear, I don't know what y'all wear. I only wear <laughs> hey, see, 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 I don't even know what that is. Look. Get you some good jeans. We're gonna and buy you some because we're gonna give you a little offering. <laughs> Y'all cash app. We cash app in today. We want to be a blessing fish from everybody. I'm telling people, I'm telling people, take the approved vaccine when it's offered because that's gonna give you you want to be safe. But there's gonna be a number, they're gonna be, you know, the next one that's gonna be approved, probably, I think, is a single dose vaccine. Okay. Oh, so okay. Um, since we're moving right in there, let's just walk through that. When you get right now, it's like Moderna and Pfizer. So right. if you get either one of those, you still get two shots. Absolutely. Okay, just so we we clear and we know. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. A yes. friend of mine who's in in medicine said, "I got one dose. I don't think I need to get the second one." And I said, "On what basis do you make that statement? You don't think you need it? What you did the studies? Mm. So you know, if 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 you develop a product and you and you the CEO." And I buy it, but I said, I'm, I'm not going to buy what she, I'm going to buy half of it. 
Well, you can get no guarantee it's going to work. Mm -hmm. So whatever you get, follow through with that because it's not a matter of feeling. These are, this is, your, your president is the one who keeps saying he don't believe the science. He crazy. I can't tell there. Yeah, I don't believe the science. Okay. Going out president or the coming in president? We only got, unfortunately, we only have one at a time. And his <laughs> name is, I ain't going to say it. Please don't say it. But, okay, but, so but, but my point is that yeah, you've got to follow the guidelines of what you got. So when they come up with the single dose vaccines, those have been tested in in that environment of single dose, and it had the same level of antibody to production as one with two. So you know you got to make sure you follow through on what you got. Okay, so I go in and I get the Pfizer shot. Let's just say I come back. What they say, twenty one days. How many days? Well, Pfizer is 21 is what they want you to do. I got okay. mine yesterday, 21 days later. Okay, so say I come back 21 days later, you know, the girl that was in the office or the doctor that was in the office is not there. It's a new person. Don't matter. Got, but wait, I got the Pfizer, but it looks like they want to give me the Moderna. They ain't going to do that. If they do, you should, look. That's what I'm asking you. So you, you, ask. you said the doctor ain't there. It don't matter who's there. When I, went in, when I went in yesterday, they know I've been at the hospital there 40 years. They all know me. They right. say, oh, that's Dr. Smith. He got fired. No, they say, oh, Dr. Smith, what's your number? It's in the computer. Right. To make sure okay. I get the, the right lot number and the right type because they don't want to mix them. That's why I'm asking you this question. I yeah, want if, to get if you they, if they offer you something different, they should be fired because they are compromising your health. Okay, so... Um, so as far as the liquid is concerned, I'm just thinking about what you're just saying. So we're going to in the office and when they put the, the needle in the, in the little thing, in the vial, right. right. And so they should be pulling out all of the liquid from that little vial. No, 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 no. Don't, no don't, I'm just don't. asking. We need to know. Guys, you, but we are so, we, we are so. You know, you know why I'm asking this question? Because, and you probably heard this. I think at one point they started talking about the United States only giving us half of the potency of this of this vaccine so that's why i'm asking these questions because yeah. when they stick me i want to be looking <laughs> what they doing but, but here's the problem with that i have a vial that has three cc's in it mm -hmm. the dose is only 0.5 i can use that same vial for six people okay so, so we you might say you didn't give me all of it you're supposed to get all of it you okay get so i know your, okay. your dose your dose is 0.5 now if they give you less than 0.5 you right, but you go ahead and say, "Can I see that syringe? Let me see how." <laughs> you, you, you just... Oh, okay. just so we know, Bishop. I just want to because most of us <laughs> haven't gone through it yet. So I, this is the first right. time to ask these questions. The same one every. Oh, and they want to know. Yeah, and, you, and 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 people should have some level of scrutiny, right? To make sure that the right dose is being given. That is important. And the same, and, and it should be the same one. So if you got Pfizer the first time, you should get Pfizer the next time. You but have to get Pfizer the first time, you, you have to. The next time. No right. mixing of the two ever. No mixing. So we're clear. No mixing. Okay. okay. Um, one of the things that they said about the shot, and people have talked about this, is that when they give you the shot, they put it in the muscle of the arm. Is that correct? What if, yeah, they put it like uh, well, yeah. something about the T cells or something like that they were saying. And the reason why I'm asking this is because some people have said when they've gotten the shot that they, you know, they almost kind of bothering them for a little bit. I just want to yeah. know what the expectation of that is when you get the oh, shot. Yeah, you, you, you may have a sore shoulder for a day after. You may have achiness. You may have low grade fever. You may have, you know, all kinds of things. Because remember what's happening with, a, with any vaccine, not just COVID, any vaccine. How does it work? It works because God gave you an intact immune system. Mm -hmm. That system is always on alert for anything that's not right. The vaccine is designed with a protein that looks like COVID, but it isn't. So, so we're you, not getting COVID in our bodies. None of these vaccines have COVID in them. Not okay. one of them. Because people have been thinking that. So I yeah. know. None of them have COVID. Okay. You can't get COVID from a vaccine. It has a piece it's a, like the, 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 the protein. Mm -hmm. So your, your immune system says, hey, you look like COVID to me. And it makes an antibody against it. 
Hmm. So the first shot you may get, you may get a little bit of reaction. Okay. But guess what? Two weeks later, your immune system has been turned on. It's making all these antibodies. Next time you get a shot, you may get a worse reaction, right? Because then they say, oh, I see you. And, and, and you've made the antibodies, so it attacks it. Okay. It's, so your body's just responding to this new antibody. Your, your, in around. fact, I feel I felt better when I had the reaction. If I had no reaction, I'd think, maybe it didn't work. You know? Yeah, it's supposed to work. We'll say, hey, what you doing here, boo? So yeah, so these are how vaccines in general work. Okay. You know, your kids got got measles booster. Mm -hmm. they, they got, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we know now what level you need to have to have complete immunity so that these things, the first time you get it, you may get a reaction, you may not. The second time, you're probably going to get something because your system is now geared up to take care of it. Now, having said that, do we need to get the vaccine again, let's say 30 years from now? Some people say they got the measles shot and then now they're saying 30 years later, they have to get the measles shot. You, you see, that, 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 yeah, that we, in, in fact, here's the truth. And it might tell you anything different. They don't know, we don't know about COVID. Okay. It's too soon. We know people, a, a good example. Pretty much said, I had COVID eight months ago. Should I get the vaccine? I said, absolutely. He said, but I, but I got antibodies. I said, how do you know? You had antibodies four, five months ago, you had antibodies. If you get, right now, if you get certain vaccines in this country, we know within three or four years, you may not have the antibody anymore, mm -hmm. even though you got the proper vaccination. So we check your blood and say, oh, you need a booster. You get a booster. So yeah, somebody's asking right now, if you had COVID and have the antibodies, is the vaccine still necessary? And you're saying yes. I would say yes, only because it, it, it may be um, redundant to get it, but it won't hurt you. But if those antibodies are, are, are too low to prevent COVID and you don't get the vaccine, you may get COVID. Got you. You see what I'm saying? You, you just don't know. Right. So you know that the vaccine won't hurt you. I'd say, and the, and the CDC says the same thing, get it. Mm -hmm. Now, now some, some people have that. I, one of my um, prisoners is a flight attendant. They got tested yesterday for COVID and, and their antibody is so high they may want them to wait a few months to get their vaccine because they, because they, but they measure that person exactly. They're not going to measure 330 million Americans. Right. See, that's why I keep going back to when I asked that question in regards right. to you go get vaccinated. Should you go to your doctor's office as opposed to going to Walgreens? Because I'm just wondering if I go walk in Walgreens, are they going to ask me these questions? I want no, somebody they, to ask me questions. They're going to ask you the questions, but they're going to vaccinate you. And they should. Mm hmm. There, there is no harm if I had if I had COVID antibodies now and get them the vaccine, it won't hurt me. Okay. Okay. We're gonna move on from there. Bishop, so when we do become vaccinated, should we still wear our mask and wash our hands? Yes, yes, yes. So we can't take our masks off and go to the COVID party. No. Okay. And, here, and here's why. And, and it, this gets into a little bit of technicality. Okay. You've heard these terms. Herd immunity. Yes, I was going to ask you about that. So let's say, use me as an example. I got the COVID vaccine. I got both of them. Mm -hmm. I can say I'm safe. But I don't know that 100%. This is what I know. I know that with 95% accuracy, I'm safe. But I could, what it means to me, I'm safe, but I could have a small amount of the virus in my system and I'm not going to get sick. But if I expose it to you, you will. Mm. You see? So you got to wait until enough of us get the vaccine and have herd immunity. So herd immunity. if that happened, then you wouldn't get sick. So there's now, a technical thing. Now the herd immunity is what seventy percent of the population. Oh yeah, it's, it's gonna take it's gonna take a year to get herd immunity. Okay, it's gonna take about a year. So we're gonna be in these masks for a while. Well, uh, again, it kind of depends. If we ramp up mm -hmm. and get selective enough, it could be that you can travel within a a place that people have been vaccinated, they've gotten their antibodies, they and, and so forth, and have more freedom. Mm -hmm. And the ones who don't know about stay quarantined. So, okay. so yeah, we're gonna get some looseness of these practices pretty soon, but it's gonna take enough of us getting vaccinated first to do that. Mm -hmm. um, somebody was just asking about what if you have a lupus? That's what I'm saying. These persons that have these situations- Go to your doctor. 
Right. That's what I was going to say. If your doctor is not real, you know, I hate to say this, but make sure it's a good doctor because, you know, you got to make sure it's somebody who knows what you right. have. Right. Therefore, I have a patient right now who has a disease. I won't say it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it called me yesterday from Mexico. I had some kids internationally said, should I get this? I said, yes, you should. And I'm write you a note that says you have this, this, and this. Therefore, you qualify right now to get the vaccine and they'll get it. Mm -hmm. But your um, doctor knows that. People are saying stuff that they've heard, you know, on the internet, talking to friends yeah. or maybe in hospitals in regard to the vaccine and your DNA. Does it do anything to your DNA at all? I'm just at, I'm here to no, no, no. I'm the liaison for the people. You know, I'm laughing. I hear them all the time. Right. I hear them all the time. You know, if you if um since it's mRNA, yes. you may turn into a dinosaur or you may I'm going like, how do you go from mRNA to turn into some animal? That ain't true. That 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 is uh, that is so blown out of you know it's, but it's I might want to turn into an animal because there's some people I'm hey watch out. But 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 uh, let me just say this, and, 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 and if you had half of my patients on this line, you know what they say? He gonna tell us this. I tell all my patients, if I'm your doctor and take care of you, you come here telling me what you need from the internet, I'm gonna cut you off. Mm. I don't care what the internet, I don't care what the internet said. You right. don't know the internet, you know me. Right. You, you can't use untested sources mm. to then repeat something as if it's gospel. Mm -hmm. They told me about, uh, what the, do they really know? So you got to, that's why, again, you need people in your sphere right. who are knowledgeable, right. who you can trust, who you ask them. Yeah, yes. Because I've had a patient come in and say, you know, I was watching TV last night and I think I saw this commercial and I go, you about to cross the line. Because <laughs> when you tell me what the TV told you, mm. go to the TV, let them take care of you. And that's you're making a lot of sense. You're helping us tonight. If, if I've been thinking of you for 30 years, you will tell me what, what they said on the commercial. I'm about to slap you. I want to. I can't. <laughs> I'm like, what do they, what do they know? Because you you know this because you because because uh the boy, you on you on the all the medias. Mm -hmm. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry can develop a video, mm -hmm. go on a Facebook, go on anywhere and say anything. anything yeah. And they doing it. Yeah. And, and, and money. And exactly. And um, I don't know if people know, but they have this app called, um, oh God, what is the name? Begin with a P. I can't even remember the name of it, but they just took it down off the internet. You, you see know? what they're doing now? The yeah. internet now, they begin to police this because people exactly. are being fed the wrong good yeah. people. It's a lot going weak. on. Yeah, it, it is. I, I don't want to hold you longer, Bishop, so I want to get through. I want to move on to the in-person worship. Um, you want me big time. I know it's going to be on this long. <laughs> oh my God. My please tap the share button everybody this has been tremendous i appreciate you and also we do want to be a blessing to bishop so if anybody would like to be kind enough to sow a seed to be a blessing to bishop you can go to my cash app which is only one the number one i'm going to put it right in the comments and it's right up in the the main tag but you can put it right there only one hooper and we're going to make sure that bishop gets all of the proceeds we just want to just tell him thank you we can't give him 500 dollars that me, you make an me, hour let me say this to, to, to you and to all of them our church from the day one have been committed to outreach with food supplies toiletries coats hats any money that, that i receive from any of these calls goes directly to make sure that people who have been marginalized get help. Mm, every, every, every penny. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad that um, you guys are doing that. Let's move to in-person worship and I'll ask these last few questions and let you go. Um, we had in our last conversation, there was something on the internet that I saw and I sent it to you and said, Bishop, what do you think about this? And you basically gave me a list of protocol for pastors returning back to their churches and even those that are in their churches. So I'm going to name them and just ask you to briefly just elaborate on them. You okay. talked about health screening before coming. Yeah. Uh, so if you go to our, our website, it's not the only one. It's one of thousands. Okay. Uh, AFC Chicago. We, 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 from day one said, we want you to be in service if you'd like to be. But here's what you must do. There's a health screen of four questions that if you come to my service on Sunday, Saturday night, you must go to the website, answer those four questions, and ask, ask all these no. If you pass the health screening, you can come. 
Okay. When you come to the door, they're going to check it. If you pass, they're going to take your temperature. Okay. When you come in, you're going to be asked, you have a mask. If you don't, we're going to give you one. Okay. We're going to put you to your seat. And if you're a family member, you can sit together. If you live together. If you don't, you will be distanced. Okay. At the first two months, we've changed that. We required, when you came to our church, you had to go to the washroom. We've got something like 90 stalls. Mm -hmm. You go to the washroom, wash your hands, and then go in church. And before you left the first month, we made you wash your hands when you left. So you couldn't say you got something at AFC. So <laughs> we, we stopped that part about you got to wash your hands. Uh -huh. But yeah, we, we have a protocol in, in our church, not the only one. It will walk a pastor through. I say this to all your viewers too. I've said to pastors across the country, no question, call our church. We have a whole team. We'll okay. walk you through for your church. Okay, great. To make sure, our senior said to this to us about a month and a half ago, said, reason that we come to church now because we know you ain't playing right right you, you, you serious that they, you they're gonna put up your safeguards at the church at the hospital everything I, and, I love you, it. and if you don't do that I, I i'm not ashamed i'm telling you then you have to excuse me you have to leave you and i you, just want to reiterate again you said yeah. this information in regard to these safeguards are um on your church's website right yeah it's, it's a it's a health screen it's okay. four questions have you had fever have you had this have you had loss of taste or smell? We go through those things. If you answer they no, bring it to the church with them, you said you can, but you you put it right on your smart device. Okay. You come in. It's, all you gotta do is click it. It take like a eighth, eighth of a second. Right. That, yeah. It's it's no backlog of having to wait. But we're trying to assure, assure people that come to worship. Safe, right. We are concerned about your health and safety, mm -hmm. and that way people can feel free. The other thing that you had mentioned um, that you talked about when we had this conversation is good ventilation. Why is yes. that important in a church? Well, because we know, and we've learned about COVID since the, this outbreak, is that there's a higher risk if you're coughing and those droplets are staying stagnant. So a small place mm -hmm. with no ventilation, the risk of COVID is much higher. But a place that has good ventilation and the air is being circulated, even if you did cough and had it, it blows it out. So what we did, we went to our manufacturer, relatively new church, and said, are we at the highest level of ventilation? He said, no. He said, okay, kick it up. And we did that. So certain doors in our church are always open. Ventilation up at, at the highest. You can do these things. And again, what are you doing? You're lessening the risk. Mm -hmm. Somebody might get might get contaminated. So, yeah, you can do all these things together. Really make it almost not a almost impossible okay, to get COVID. right. Yeah. Okay, Bishop. Now I know your church seats what thirty five. Your new sanctuary is about thirty five hundred. That's correct. Um, so, what would you say to a church where maybe they have only a hundred seats in it? Then okay, in we, regard we, to ventilation, how could they work that out? Same thing. We're having a funeral at our in our chapel this coming week. The family has been informed the size of the chapel. We've done it before. We know the distance that they must come in. We can tell them before they come how many can come total. And we maximize in any church. You, you can go to your and say, what's my ventilation? You can get, get engineers to come in and look at it. And they can tell you if it's good or not. They have standards for ventilation. And you okay. can you can you can buy apparatus to, to boost it. Now Early on, I had to, I had to caution pastors because they said they was being sold these. Um, That's what I was going to ask you, so people don't take get taken advantage of. Well, yeah, be careful. This guy, wow. this one guy said, I bought this system for five thousand dollars, and within a week, it was clear we were it was better because we had less dust, less coughing. I said to him, "You're right, but you didn't you didn't lessen your risk of COVID." Mm. Yeah, you know, you you can you can buy a system now that will clean your air, right. but it doesn't it doesn't clean viruses. So you got to be careful in that. Okay. What may be overall, I mean, I can buy a system now with twenty thousand dollars that can make sure you don't get a number of things. But folk are not getting sick from that. But yeah. it will clean your air. Good. But but it, but it may not remove. Viruses. Somebody aspirates or something like that. Well, I'm yeah. saying that you got to be careful. You're not paying for something that's not yeah. doing what you wanted to what do. You to do, yeah. 
and that's why I wanted to ask you these questions because there are a lot of pastors, you know, mm. even in regard to like you were saying, when people enter the church and they exit the church, like um, somebody right. told me at Bishop Ellis's church, they exit row by row. So I know you have a large church, and you know, I'm sure you right. guys up on your level, but these smaller churches, I want to make sure that we're talking to those pastors so they'll know in their church should they also exit row by row. They should. What's your suggestion? Uh, they they should do that. A, and I'll tell you this, and I'll be totally transparent sure I, in, in our church i was only allowed to dismiss once i'm a typical pastor mm -hmm. i could you know i said hey y'all hey, just 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 be careful whatever they said bishop you can't you you too much of a people person they gotta go they gotta go section by section see i can't do that so i had to, in the end i say god bless you all i'm going back to my office they're right. gonna dismiss you because i'm, I'm too much of a person people yes, person but you have to it because even if, if you do it that way, they can go out to the parking lot and, mm -hmm. and congregate, but that ain't on right. us. Right, right, right. Well, a long time we had we we had our biggest out we had an outdoor circle with eight hundred people outdoors, because we knew that the air was right. You know, so even a small church, you can still do what you need to do to minimize your risk. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it just it just, it just give people get, ideas of you yeah, know. I mean, people, if, but, if it's not as cold outside and they can open the doors, does that help with the ventilation? Yes. With those that type of thing. Yeah, and again, I I've told pastors from I don't care what your denomination is, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, UPC. I don't care. Call our church. We have a commitment to share the knowledge that we have with whoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you can always call me directly, but I got people, they are trained in this. Right, right, they can, right, right. They can work so cool. better, better than I can about your square footage and the air ventilation. I don't know that stuff. They, I know the concept. They know it. Right, right. And they can help you to feel safe in your particular space. I'm gonna um I'm gonna go to your website and probably do a flyer just so that people have okay. the links and all that stuff. Another thing that you talked about was temperature screening. And I know you know several churches you go in, they got the little temperature check or whatever. Do you recommend a specific one, anything like that in regard to the just make sure it's one that is well known? Um a friend of mine uh has in their church, they got the electronic one cost twenty five thousand, but wow. it can screen, but it can screen people by the hundreds. You just walk in. In the hospital, oh, I'm at wow. right now. If you walk in a certain area, you being screened without knowing you being screened. Like an airport or something like that. No, know? they know your temperature right. before you. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Because of what you can afford. We, thermal, we have a, they call it like a thermal something. They call it right. And, and, they, and I mean, they they to tell you a funny story. The guy that bought that one said at the second week, I'm about to, I'm about to find my people. If this thing don't show somebody being positive, I'm wasting my money. <laughs> but 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 again. Mm -hmm. We have the handheld. We, we got like fifteen now. We got fifteen doors. Mm -hmm. You come in. It ain't no waiting list. But we, but we at least we can say when you came in here, right? We minimize the risk of anybody spreading COVID. Now, that one of the, important. One of the things I had suggested to people in regard to the temperature screening is that they put a sign on outside the door or maybe in the vestibule area that basically says. If your temperature exceeds X, Y, and Z, you will not be permitted into the sanctuary. Do you think that's fair? Yes. That's the little idea the Lord gave me. Now, have you ever had a situation at your church, Bishop, where you had to turn somebody away? Has that happened? Now, they don't They don't tell me every case, mm -hmm. but they've told me about one person said, I don't believe in mass. We said, well, God bless you. You mean I have to leave? Yes, and right now. Mm. You know, we, we are not debating with people the pros and cons of their belief. We're saying up front, if you come here, yeah, right. this is what it is. Mm -hmm. If you don't have to come, but if you come here, mm -hmm. so that everybody we say, here is what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't gotcha. feel late in my spirit. Then you should stay home. <laughs> okay, so with the seating, it's basically the six feet. If you're with your family, if you're not with your family, basically, you know, the, the ushers are basically doing the seating. Yeah, and it's already designated. In fact, we have it mapped out. Okay. And I sanctuary, but the ushers will seat you. Okay. So you move, you recommend that passes map. You move, come say, come say, excuse me. <laughs> the first few weeks, it, it you know, I had to close my eyes. Let me my <laughs> move. It say, is an adjustment. It's an adjustment. Bishop, we gotta do this. We yeah. you can't advertise safety and then not do it. Mm. Good, good, good. What about um the mass? Everybody's sitting in the church with a mask on. Yes. In the congregation. Yes. And 
also like, um, cause this one is important to me in regard to singers, praise and worship, the preachers, everybody who's on the pulpit area. Um, each There's person- not a pulpit some, area. I know a lot okay. of people. Praise and worship people in our, on our pulpit, they can take their mask off. They're at least 15 to 20 feet apart. And they're on individual mics. Yes, and they're at least 20, 30 feet from the closest parishioner. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they have their own, and once the mic is used, we go up and wipe off every mic. Okay, and the other thing is in regard to these uh, mass bishops, some mass, you know, everybody's doing these fancy things. And so if they have a mass that doesn't have a filter, do you think that's safe? Or should they make sure they have their little insert in there? I don't, I don't wear masks with those inserts. Again, think about this. The, the masks that are effective at the lowest level are those that keep your stuff in you. Mm -hmm. The filters help you not to give it to somebody out there. Mm -hmm. This is to keep it in so it's only with you. The, the, some of the filters, you got to be careful because you may be taking stuff out that's coming into you that's not helpful. In other words, I want to make sure that you're not spreading it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. If it's the best at its lowest effectiveness is to keep it, whatever you have, you still have it. Mm -hmm. The mass of the hospital go a little bit further. And then the N95s, uh, even if it's out there, it can't get in. Mm -hmm. But most masks don't do that. Most masks don't protect you from what's out coming in. It doesn't need to be too expensive. Right. Whatever you have in, in you. So again, it's a little bit tricky and you can get very technical about it. Some of these masks with the filters, I wonder what they're filtering. I don't, they're not have all been tested. I just, that's why I wanted to just bring it up because, you know, everybody's getting these little fancy masks. You know, Bruce Willis, I don't know if you heard, he was trending on Twitter yesterday. He was in a store, Rite Aid, and he didn't, he didn't have on a mask, but he had a bandana around his neck. So they were asking him to at least put the bandana up over his nose and, you know, he decided to decline that. So that's yeah, but, what I'm saying. But, but he, you're right, but he think that's a good point. Look, the bear is, is really what it is called, you call it mask, whatever. It's barrier protection. Barrier to what? It has to cover everything, your nose and your mouth and be a seal. If it's like this, it's no good. Mm -hmm. Whatever's in you is coming out. If it's like this, it's no good, still coming out. It's got to cover everything. And, and, and it should be fitted so that it's, it's, it's fitted that way. That is why it's effective. A so bad I, is not. Right, so that's why I just want to be clear here because if I just take a, a regular bandana and I know I'm pushing this issue because sometimes people get these little fancy masks and they make them, but they don't necessarily have like a little, you know what I'm saying? A little cloth or whatever to kind of make sure that when you speak to somebody, you don't right. have to break. That's well, what I'm again, going. If you if you go on any website that help you to make a mask, it will tell you it is the layering, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and the fabric That's that, a catches, yeah. that catches what you're breathing and mm -hmm. does not let it out. So I don't want to get into the technicality of that. That's why I'm saying to people, just a fancy filter by itself won't help you. It has to cover everything. Gotcha. Now in the hospital, when we deal with patients, we have to cover our eyes too. Although I, I don't wear those eye shields. I don't think you get cold from your eyes, but because we're in a, a high risk environment. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, the restrooms, what do you suggest for um, churches in regard to the restrooms? Keep them clean like you always do. We do. have to like, you know, make sure we got Lysol and wipes and Perel and... No, we have Perel, we have those things for hand. But no, but but it's but it's no different than what we had before. Okay, gotcha. In other words, using supersonic cleanser ain't gonna help any more than than keep the stuff clean. In worship, should you remove your mask when you're using a mic? Yes, that's going to preach somewhere, you know. Yes, you should, but but make sure that you're not close to anybody around you. If somebody got up before me. Should they change the mic, spray it with Lysol? They should wipe it. They should definitely wipe it only because- If they wipe if, it, that's fine? Yeah, but if they wipe it with any kind of an antiseptic- Okay. It kills the virus. Okay, just want to be sure, want to put it out. And again, even if they, I'm not suggesting this, but even if they didn't, 
you're not letting that 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 virus has to get from that mic into your mouth or your nose. And you're not doing, I don't think we're, well, I, I don't know what we're doing. But anyway, yeah. We almost there, Bishop, we almost there. Is there anything that you think oh. um, that's coming up in regard to COVID, the vaccine, or anything like that that you think we should be vigilant about? I, I think that we just stay vigilant about the trusted voices that will stay in, because one of my responsibilities is to stay informed mm -hmm. about as we learn, as we understand, to make sure that that keeps going out to people. But you can't, you again, it, it's, 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 this is pre-COVID. It's amazing to me what sources people use for truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna tell you, the, the most popular person is not the most well-informed. That's very true. Because you got two million right. on, your, on your Twitter. You know, you know, you know I, 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 won't, I won't use the name, I don't mean this person. Right. This happened years ago. Somebody said, you know, because Michael Jordan says to get this whatever, even talking about, about basketball, he doesn't know about that. Mm -hmm. But you do it because he's popular. Right. We have in our society, I believe, this is only my opinion, we have gone down to the dregs of believing popularity over truth and facts. Mm. Especially some, in the social media, internet world. Especially yeah. some of these sources, I wouldn't trust them around the corner. Mm. But they're very popular. And so yeah. they bear responsibility when people start making decisions. Because, you know, Beyonce said, well, what is it about? Is it about business? She's good. Mm -hmm. Is it about singing? She's great. Is it about medicine? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd, rather, I'd rather go to Johns Hopkins and ask him about the medicine part. Well, that's what, you know, one of the questions I have here is uh, who, who are our trusted um, officials when it comes to the future after today? We want to know something. Where do we go? I mean, your website is going to have stuff. And please, anytime you're going to be speaking somewhere that we can, you know, have access to it, please send me the link. I would love to let people know. I'm, I'm going to do that. And, I, and, I will, and I'll give you other people that I okay. know okay. and trust Okay, are not out to make a dollar. You know, let's let's be honest about it. Sometimes yes. economics incentivizes these things too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I'm saying to people, the Lord told me, share your knowledge mm -hmm. with everybody. Mm -hmm. Because it's a this is a human issue. Yes. You know, I, I I'm you know, you gotta and you, if you have a doctor that right now you don't trust, why are you still that doctor? Mm. If you have wait a minute, if you have a pastor, you know, I don't trust him. Why right. you, I say that all the time. I say, I say, okay, what's the deal? Why are you still, you got to have a trust. You really can't hear somebody that you don't trust. You, you got to get yeah. to in your circle about certain things that you trust. Mm -hmm. You can't do that overnight because you, right. you trust them over a period of time. Mm -hmm. You need to work on that now so that when the, when the emergency comes, you oh, ain't screaming. Right, right, right. You pick up the phone and you already know. Follow what hey, they do. Hey, what about, right. yes. Yeah, so, all right, yeah. And I better go because my wife said it's been almost two hours. Five more minutes, I promise you. I, I, I blame her when I want to get out of something. Listen, five minutes, five minutes. There's been something that's been called the Fauci effect going on with kids are being inspired to become doctors. Yep. Who inspired you to become a doctor? And what would you say to any kid or anybody that's looking in regards to becoming a doctor? I'll say it, I'll say it like this. Um, my mother was 26. She had six kids. She got sick one day and she died the next. Mm -hmm. I know now that that pushed me into medicine. I was going to be a teacher. Um, in my church, I told you about the situation when they told me I couldn't be a doctor. I was the first person in my church to become a physician. There's at least 30 in there now. Wow. You know what? You know this when you're preaching and teaching. Kids almost, not 100%, cannot be what they cannot see. Exactly. We need to have living role models for these kids. Mm. So when they say, I want to be like her, I want to be, you know, and so th that's a part of the obligation that inspired me. And I can tell you stories of people who said, you know, you're the reason my son is a doctor. I go, how? He saw you at XYZ 20 years ago and decided, well, I know what that meant. He's a black person. Hey, right. I want right. to be him. So that's why I say about trusted voices. We need people that will be top level. Stop. 
Stop dumbing down the gospel. Stop dumbing down stuff and yeah. make us the less. We have the capacity as God's children to be the best in any field that we choose. Mm -hmm. And so let's have that standard high so that people can trust us and say, no, hey, I know uh, Dr. Corbett. I know A, B, and C. The Fauci effect is the president hates that because, yeah, this, this guy, this guy has survived 40 years as, in, uh, in, in his profession, and yeah. you know you can trust him. Yeah. He, should be, he should be congratulated. He should be, and he gets up every day, and he's running somewhere. I ain't mad. Right. <laughs> Bishop, you have been tremendous with us on tonight. Thank Again, um, I appreciate you and all that you do, and I thank you for being here for me personally. You know, mm -hmm. I had to make that call and get a trusted voice. I was like, am I doing the right thing? <laughs> But I came out okay. Thank you, Lord. And I just thank God for you. I never would have thought that, you know, yeah. I'm just coming to your church just to preach. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it's a God has a way. Yes, yes, yes. And it's a blessing just to be able to connect. What were you going to say? Something He's doing what you're doing. I, I mean, this is not just, you know, formal. He doing what you're doing because people listen to you. They know you. You get around, you know, you're authentic. And that's important. Keep your name like that. So they're focusing. I'm going to call. Dr. Hooper, then what should I do? Right? <laughs> What's bishop number again? And, and, and by the book, by, by Blood Works, I'm going to say this it, it, without shame. It is the best book for child of God on blood. That It is. It, it This book is real. It's factual. It'll bless you. You autographed it for me. So you guys, when you, you do read that, you can book, read that. Book, um, bishop, where can they get it from? So Amazon and three, three W's A F C Chicago. I, I put it up there already, so they it's only at your church. No, you can go to Amazon. It's, it's okay. It's, it's on ebooks, all that. Okay. Yeah, you can download it. Please, um, make sure you get this book. It's a great, great book on blood. Um, it just has. Listen, we always claiming the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. That's why when I saw it, I was sold because you know that's my apostolic background about the blood. Red cells, so. red cells. It, it talks about autoimmune disease when you bite and devour one another. It's got blood wow. analogies from God in the blood because the blood is the life. Yes. Any creature that's prepared for like. Easter resurrection. Yes, uh, I was going to say that. that because it's going it's going to give you some solid yes information about what this is all about. And I often say, you know, again, one of my hashtag is no surface preacher at Hooper uh, Ministry Academy. And if you want to get off that surface, especially for those type of services, instead of sounding like everybody else and everybody saying the same thing, this is definitely going to take you deeper. Please, 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 once again, you all, please hit the share button. We want to be a blessing to Bishop Smith. Please be kind enough to sow a seed of any kind, $10, $20, $50, however the Lord lead. And we're going to make sure that Bishop gets that seed. And as he said, he's yep. going to just turn it right over to the missions and what he's doing at his church. Bishop, again, I thank you. Only one Hooper at Cash App is only one, the number one in the Hooper. Only one right Hooper. Because it's only one. <laughs> I'm going. Bishop, thank you. I love you. Please tell First Lady, I said hello. Really quickly, I wanted to ask you this. Any of your daughters, anybody in the medical? No? My wife is a pharmacist. I'm a physician. None of my, I have a, all my daughters, okay, quick. This is, this is like right. a little, little sociology thing. I had a rule in our house. I have three daughters. I will pay for your wedding, your everything, but only if you get your degree before you get married. Mm. If you get married before you before you get your first degree, I ain't paying for nothing. They all <laughs> got many, that. How many they have all, you paid for this? They all got their degrees, and Ooh. they all have at least a second degree. And my medicine, any, any of my, my middle my middle daughter is getting her PhD now. My other daughter is getting her master's, and my daughter, who's the youngest, was going to be a psychologist. I told her no, be a psychiatrist. She wouldn't do it. She got a psychology degree. She got a master's in psychology. She got married, opened a practice, thriving. Wow. Seven years ago I said, I'm gonna be a psychiatrist. I said, you're too old now. She said, my mom I said, she wanna be a psychiatrist. She finished That's medicine so with, a, with, with, now she got two children and a husband, finished her medicine. She's in Wisconsin, Wisconsin now doing her psychiatry residency. The girl is balling. 
So wow. she's not one as a doctor, but she's a psychiatrist. Bishop, anybody doing Christian counseling or anything like that in case oh, any yeah. of the saints need that? Oh, oh yeah. If you call the church, okay. we have a list of in our church and beyond our church who are qualified Christian individual uh, group uh, marital counselors. People need counseling. Yes. With yeah, the Holy Ghost that. speaking in tongues, you need because <laughs> your your spirit can be saved, but your emotion need help. I, come on here, Bishop. Now that's a part two. <laughs> hey. hey, bye, Bishop. I love you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Yeah, thank you, you guys. Lo thank love you, you so much. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. We'll talk soon. We're gonna okay. give to you as well. Uh, Facebook, thank you so much for watching us on tonight. Were you all blessed? I try to ask as many questions as I could. Y'all talk back to me for a few minutes. Were you blessed? That's what I need to know. Were you blessed? Y'all talk back to me. I'll give you, you know, we'll stay on here for about 10 minutes. Were you blessed? I want to know. And please, please, y'all sow a seed. Don't let me carry all of the burden. Y'all always cash apping somebody to go get some sneakers, go get a jacket, to get something to eat. Come on, let's be a blessing to Bishop Smith. I mean, we got 45 years of medical advice on tonight. So please sow a seed of any amount. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to judge you no matter what you do, but it just kind of adds to what I'm going to do because I cannot do nothing because he really blessed us on tonight. So you can sow that seed at only one Hooper at Cash App or you can go to my PayPal and just put in my name, Deborah Hooper. Any highlights? Let's talk for a few minutes. Any highlights? Anybody want to say something that really, really blessed them? I know y'all got some questions. I was looking at I was like, wow, these are really, really good. But remember, I was trying to get them questions earlier. <laughs> but tell me, tell me, tell me, what was a highlight? A necessity, absolutely, Bishop Thorpe. I mean, when Bishop was just sharing me what he did with Bishop Omer, and I'm gonna, I think I posted it already, but I'm gonna repost it. It's only one Hooper, Lady Hopkins. It's just the number one, only one Hooper. Um, I was like, I, I just stopped everything I was doing that morning. I called him and I was like, oh my God, Bishop. And then I saw something that was online that was just really fake. And I was like, what do you have to say about this? And the way he kicked it to me, I said, you know what, Bishop, I need you to come on my platform. And as he said, I want to have on people that are authentic, people that can be a blessing. Remember, we were doing the front line at the beginning of COVID. So now we're kind of coming on the back end. And so I want to bring on some other people. Um, Bishop um, Desna Ingram talking about the re-entering of the church really blessed him. Anybody else want to share anything, that, any comments that really, really blessed you? Um, knowing the information about the vaccine. Let me see. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Thank you so much, Keith. I appreciate you so want to see whatever it is. It's fine. I just want to be able to give Bishop something. I, I can't even imagine, you know, on that level, how much they make an hour or if they even get paid like that. He basically retired at this particular time. I mean, his wife is a pharmacist. I mean, just a wealth of information. His children, he talked about his three daughters. They are uh, Bishop Jackie McCullough, Jackie McCullough's um, God daughters. I remember when I first was going to the church and they were much younger. They were like in their teens and stuff. Um, just an excellent church. So if you're in Chicago, check out his church, um, the Apostolic Faith Church. Really excellent, excellent church. Um, again, this is his book. Excellent book. Y'all know, let me see if I can get, get it on the screen. His name is in light gray, so it can be hard to see, but it says Bishop Horace E. Smith. Let me come this way. Let me see if I put it up close. There you go. If you want to take a snapshot, if you want to take a snapshot of the screen, you can do that excellent excellent book so please feel free um let me see dr y'all the same was very hesitant about getting the vaccine gonna get it now great i'm gonna let him know that that this has helped some people to change their minds i know he definitely helped me that whole thing about the safeguards is what really 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 blessed me and so um 
Thank you. Um, Taikisha is a registered nurse. She said this was great. So it's just good to hear from other people who are in the field and what they have to say about it. You know, of course, this is going to be up. So it's a, you know, you can definitely share it with your loved ones. You know, it's, it's really about being informed. That's what I wanted to do is just bring you all some information, I'm trying to get some other people also um, to share some information with you as well in regard to whatever we need <laughs> at this particular time. Let me see if it's anybody else. I don't want to cut it off unless somebody is saying something. Chris said, thank you, Dr. Hooper. Um, Apostle Tava said, this was a great forum. Uh, we have Bishop's book, Blood Words. Thank you for that. Sister Williams, let me see. Um, thank you, Dr. Hooper. Bishop Hart Smith was mostly needful for this. Anybody else have anything that you wanted to say? Let me see. Oh, Lord, I gotta scroll back down, scroll back down. So I'm really just hoping that, you know, you got a lot of your questions answered on tonight because that's really the goal is to answer these questions. I just kept thinking to myself, listen, I want to know when I go in, I want to be looking, you know, what they're supposed to be doing. How is it going to work? Am I going to be safe? Am I going to be okay? Am I going to fall out and go into a seizure? Like what's going to happen? But, you know, as he just said so profoundly, it's just good to have um, the knowledge from trusted individuals that um, have basically been out there and know what they're doing. When he told me he was sitting in the room with Dr. Corbett and Dr. Fauci, I said, oh no, you're the one. You got to come on here <laughs> and help us. All right, everybody. Enough said. Again, thank you so much. I'm going to come back on because there's something I want to share with y'all. So I'm going to come off here and I'm going to come back on just a few minutes just to share something really, 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 really good. I got a good nugget that I think will bless your life. All right, everybody. Thank you so much again for watching. Watching. I love you all. And I'll talk with you soon in a few minutes. God bless. This is Dr. Deborah Hooper, the ministry coach. And what I do is prepare you and coach and counsel you in regard to your ministry, providing strategies and all those different kinds of things that you need. Again, this is my book. Hooper's Evangelist and Minister's Handbook, everything you need to know before you go. If you're looking for product on almost anything in ministry, your vestments, how to preach, um, doing flyers, doing online, whatever you need, feel free to go to my website at DeborahHooper.com, D-E-B-O-R-A-H-O-O-P-E-R. -E -E God bless you, everybody, and I'll talk to you in a few minutes. Bye-bye.